The Agriculture Department has confirmed that four armyworms are destroying crops in Limpopo, the Northwest and the Free State. Officials say they had to wait until the caterpillars turned into moths before they could positively identify the pests. Jan Hendrik Fenter from the Agriculture Department joins us now on the line. Jan, a very good morning to you and thank you for joining us. Let's begin perhaps with a tutorial on just what it is that attracts the armyworms. Um, good morning um, to you as well. Um, I didn't hear your question quite well. Can you just repeat it? My question was if you could just start us off with a tutorial on what it is that creates or attracts these armyworms to crops. Okay. Um, this, this armyworm is a, basically a migratory pest as well. So we, we suspect that it, after it came into Africa, it actually started migrating on, on um weather fronts, in other, words, in other words, wind currents. So basically it lands and where it can feed a suitable, find a suitable host, it uh, moth will lay eggs on the, moth, on the host and then the, the larva will start eating where the hatch. Um, and in this case, maize is, is grown quite considerably all over Africa um, and it finds suitable hosts quite often. The exact attraction um, on, in this case we don't know because it also depends on which uh, specific strain of form, army, full army worm we have in South Africa. That is a, a part we don't know yet. Do we know, Jan, if there is a link between this pest and the recent droughts that we saw throughout 2016? We know that in, um, in the case of, of, of African army worms, we often emerge in greater numbers after a drought. For this one, it is not quite sure um, because the, the, the test was first identified in Nigeria about a year ago only. And for this pest to develop such great numbers over such a short period of time, um, a lot of questions still needs to be answered. So we suspect it might, be, might have been longer in Africa than the first report. In other words, there was time for it to create big numbers, and certainly drought may have an influence on it to start migrating further. And I understand you've implemented a response plan in efforts to tackle uh, this infestation. Just how far are we with that, and what does the plan entail? Yes, the, the response plan is in terms of South Africa's emergency plan test response plan, um, which is already executive approved plan. Um, so in other words, we follow an existing generic plan. So the first step now is, is to, to get a message out that we have a full army women, and that is going out as, as, as we are speaking, and that's why you're phoning me as well. Um, and then we have a, a joint operation and committee that's, that's meeting on Monday morning um, sharply at 8 o'clock. Um, there we will do the operation. So what must need to happen now is we have to guide farmers on how to deal with the test. And so there's roadshows already planned that, that will reach out to the farming communities. And of course, we have to link up with our extension support from the provinces. What is the timeline then for the whole pro process? Well, in the next couple of weeks, we will get the message out. Um, at the same time, we're also registering pesticides, so farmers may, may be able to use pesticides which is effective against this pest, and then a guideline on when to, to use the pesticides. In other words, it's, there's one thing to just spray something, there's other thing to spray it at the right time and at the right age of the maize. Um, we found it is more effective to spray when the maize are very, very small still, when the, because these caterpillars creep very deeply into the leaf walls um, and into the cops of the maize, for instance. So it's difficult to spray them um, in such a way that the, the chemicals can reach the pest. Um, and, and that is a guidance that needs to be able to, um, to, be get, to be get through to the farmers. Um, and then also one needs to assess the damage. Um, the damage is, is not a, a, a blanket over the whole of the provinces. There are patches which got more damage and then other patches got non-damage as far as we could determine this far. So all of that needs to be pinpointed more precisely. Mm. You talk about pinpointing the extent of the damage more precisely. Just how much ground have you covered as far as that's concerned? We're also hearing a concern that 
this infestation could have an impact on the economy as our maize uh, exports could be banned or restricted in certain parts of the world. How's that going? Okay, now, uh, yes, now maize production in South Africa is, is, we produce maize for two reasons. Mainly, it's, um, it is for grain, for milling or processing, and then for fresh eating. Now, fresh maize is, is mostly the, um, consumed within South Africa, um, and then maize for, for, for milling or processing, um, uh, and that is done for, for human consumption or animal consumption, that is exported mainly, and that is um, dry maize. And this pest doesn't attack dry maize. Um, in other words, it's not a storage pest. And even if it would have been a storage pest, it would have been treated the same as all other storage pests. And in other words, it would be fumigated uh, where it's stored in, in, in silo bins. In other words, there's no scientific reason to prohibit the export of maize to other countries for grain purposes. Mm. Just here at home, before I let you go, maize, as we know in South Africa, is one of the major staples. When can we expect consumers, if at all, to feel the impact of this infestation at the toll? Well, we suspect there's going to be an impact for consumers who, who love um, uh, sweet corn that they, they use as a, as a fresh maize um, greatly, and then there will be a, a, certainly an impact on, on resource poor farmers in, in the northern Limpopo. Um, that's that also differs from, from place to place. So it seems like our yellow maize varieties are more acceptable. White maize varieties are, are less acceptable. But that's an assumption, uh, and therefore you have to go out literally from farm to farm to assess what is the damage. And um, that is not a, a on and off switch that one can push. Uh, one needs to get the guys out, and one needs to get the extent and support guys from the provinces out to, to go out and, and look what is happening. All right, thank you for that, Jan Hendrik Fenter from the Agriculture Department speaking to us there.